arguably my favorite question so far. Someone says, you know what? I, I just don't feel like praying. I don't want to pray. I feel like I'm talking to a wall when I pray, so I don't do it very much. You know, Eric, how do I develop a desire to be a praying person who spends time every day praying and spending time with the Father at his feet? You know, I can give you the David Goggins answer. Uh, I saw a video with him the other day. He was at a hotel and he saw this elliptical machine in the gym and a thought crossed his mind. I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to get on that machine. And the second that a thought like that crosses his mind, he does the opposite. So he got on the machine for like two hours and 40 minutes straight. So am I saying that, you know, you don't want to pray. And so the answer is just do it anyways. Yes and no. Uh, I've got a couple of things I think you'll find really helpful. The first one is to be honest with God. You know, the book of Psalms, if you read it, is giving us permission to be totally honest and vulnerable with God. And so ask him. Say, God, I don't want to pray. It, I don't like it. It, it. I don't enjoy it. It's hard for me to do. Would you please help me have more desire to pray? I love the story in the book of Mark, chapter 9, verses 14 to 29. Essentially, a dad comes with a son who's demonically possessed, and he tells Jesus that he wasn't able to get this demon cast out through his disciples. They just weren't able to do it. And Jesus gets kind of frustrated, and, and, and finally the guy says, are you willing to do it? And he says, of course I'm willing to do it if you have faith. And the guy says, um, I love this, he says, I do believe that you can do it and that you will do it, but help me with my unbelief. And so we can do that same thing. We can be honest with God by just saying, God, I, I want to pray, or I guess I, I want to have the desire to pray, but I, I struggle. Will you help me? Will you increase my desire to be a praying person? I ask God that all the time, and he's been faithful. I, I love to pray now. The second thing is discipline, right? This is the David Goggins principle. I love Matthew chapter 6, verse 6. He says, When you pray, go into your private room, shut your door, and pray to your Father who's in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. This is Jesus talking. It says, when you pray. It doesn't say if or maybe. It says, when you pray. Jesus is assuming that we will pray. And so let's go to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 11. It says, No discipline seems enjoyable at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it yields a peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. That's why they call it the spiritual disciplines, because we have to discipline ourselves and train ourselves to do the things we don't necessarily want to do. And, and maybe they're not enjoyable or pleasurable at first. But I'm telling you, as an example of someone who just really didn't like to pray, I love praying now. And I'm encouraging you to do the same, to be disciplined and set that habit. And over time, as you begin to encounter the Lord, you're going to love praying. Last but not least, uh, find your rhythm. What I mean by that, I am not good at getting by myself in a prayer closet and praying out loud. Instead, I am a journaler. I like to write in a journal. It allows me to focus. Otherwise, my brain goes all over the place. I like to do it really early with a cup of coffee in my hand when it's still dark out and it's quiet in my house. So I have a rhythm. I have found a time and a place and a way of praying that really works well for me. I'm good at it and I enjoy it. And uh, I feel like I can hear God and spend time with him. And every time I uh, spend time praying, every single morning, I don't take a morning off, I can tell you that I feel like I've encountered God. I've heard from him. I've experienced him. I walk away uh, like he's given me some daily bread. And so that's it. I'm going to leave you with one last thought. And I want you to watch this video. And it's that we need to change our mindset about praying. We need to understand the importance of it and the cost that was paid for us to be able to do it. And I think that's a really good place to start. And so hopefully that's helpful. If you guys have any other ideas or any thoughts or any questions, hit me up. I'm here for you. Love you. In my opinion, this is an inarguable fact of friendship with God, that the friends of God consistently spend time alone in prayer with God. This is sacred. Alone time with the God of the universe is sacred to me. Want to know why? Because my time with the Father costs the Son his life. And I cannot go in to be alone with the God of the universe acting like it's no big deal. 
I couldn't go in without the blood of his son. So I walk in every time knowing this is holy simply because of what it cost his one and only begotten son and best friend.